hello everyone uh, i hope all of you are doing well so uh, we're going to talk about distinguishing non-orthogonal states in this uh, video this uh, section will be a bit mathematically challenging so um, i will strongly recommend to all of you that uh, you stay focused during this video and the next one and uh, please ask us questions during the live discussion sessions uh, so that it's absolutely clear to you what we are talking about. All right. So uh, distinguishing non-orthogonal states, this is important. So let me try to give you the scenario first and then try to uh, explain what's going on. All right. So let's say that uh, you are given a, a qubit in the state psi or, or not necessarily a qubit. It, it can be any system okay you you are given a state psi and the promise is the promise is this is either in the state alpha 0 or in the state alpha 1 okay and uh, the probability of getting alpha 0 is half and the probability of alpha 1 is half so it's like, for example, someone is tossing a coin, an unbiased coin. So there's a 50-50 chance of uh, getting heads or tails. If, if it is a head, they're giving you alpha zero. And if it's a tail, they're giving you alpha one. All right, it's something like this. You can imagine like this. So uh, so when, it, when they give it to you, they just give you the promise that it can either be alpha zero or alpha one with equal probability. And uh, there's no other information about the state. All right. So how can you say that whether it is alpha zero or alpha one? All right. So uh, the easiest possibility will be to measure, right? Uh, you can perform a measurement and if it collapses in alpha zero, then you would say alpha zero. If it collapses to alpha one, then you call it alpha one. But there's a catch. The catch is in a measurement, I mean, a measurement process can only distinguish distinguish orthogonal states. Okay, so it can only distinguish. Uh, let me use. A different color it can only distinguish orthogonal states that means that uh, say for example if your state psi is in some state 1 by root 2 0 plus 1 by root 2 1 it will collapse to either 0 or 1 if and only if the inner product between 0 and 1 is 0 okay it only collapses to mutually orthogonal uh, vectors or subspaces all right the so uh, I hope this is clear to you. Now, what I'm trying to say is that alpha, alpha zero and alpha one are not orthogonal to each other, all right? So alpha zero and alpha one, inner product between them is not equal to zero. And they're not identically zero as well. So it's like alpha zero is in this direction and alpha one is in this direction all right they are not orthogonal to each other so now how will you distinguish them uh, how will you distinguish them if, if someone has given you random if someone has given you a state psi all right so uh, classic I mean the first choice would be you can guess it randomly I mean if you just guess it randomly that okay let's say it's alpha zero then uh, your chance of getting it right is 50 percent right or the probability of getting it right is half but what we will show in this section or in this video that via quantum measurements we can make it better okay so we can make it better and now let's say that i want to perform a measurement a quantum measurement Okay, then obviously I have to choose a basis. Then let's say that the decomposition 
the projection operators are, are pi 0 and pi 1. Please uh, notice that this 0 is not related to this 0. Okay? These are independent choices. It's just the name, the 0. So measurement will uh, project in the pi 0 direction. So the picture is something like this. So this is your alpha 0 and alpha 1. So maybe this is your uh, the so-called pi 0 direction and this is let's say the pi 1 direction okay this is this will be the measurement decomposition if you perform a measurement it will either be projected in the pi 0 direction or it will be projected in the pi 1 direction all right and from there can you say that uh, your state was in alpha 0 or alpha 1 all right so this is the idea that the projection operators are pi 0 and pi 1 and uh, I will need one more property which I'll use that is pi 0 they are orthogonal projections so obviously you know by definition that is that pi 0 square is pi 0 and pi 1 square is pi 1 uh, sorry and pi 1 square is pi 1 and one more property is that as it is an orthogonal decomposition in a two-dimensional space in that two-dimensional space pi 0 plus pi 1 is equal to identity okay how do I see that let's say that the zero direction uh, I mean if you if you consider the regular i j vector in a two-dimensional plane or by that I mean that this is the unit vector in the x direction and let's say this is the unit vector in the y direction this is the regular uh, unit vectors that you use in physics in, in a two-dimensional problem all right so if I define uh, this i as the projection in the i direction pi i and pi j is defined as j j then you can easily check that uh, i i mm, plus j j is equal to 1 is equal to identity why because uh, you acted act on a general vector on it uh, you act on a general vector by this operator okay let's say this is any general vector can be written a x i plus a y j right this is any general vector now if you multiply these two terms you will get a x i and i inner product will give you one so you'll just be left with this then you multiply this by this that will give you zero because i inner product j is zero similarly you th th this with this would be give you zero and the last one would give you a y of j so the idea is uh, you started with this vector and you ended up with this vector so this is nothing but an identity operation all right and this is nothing but pi i plus pi j okay so i can i have showed you that if I am working on a two-dimensional plane and if I'm taking two orthogonal projections then they they complete the they follow the completeness relationship that means that the the sum of them their projection operators is one uh, by one I mean identity identity operation all right so uh, these are the properties that I'll use so let me mark it down so I'll use this and these okay these are my measurements so I'm, I'm mentioning it again these pi zeros and pi ones are the orange lines here okay they are not related to alpha zero or alpha one okay it's my choice I will choose it what what me what measurement do I want to do to distinguish alpha zero and alpha one all right so uh, let's go on and let's try to define success probability okay so uh, what is success probability my success probability is if I measure in the pi 0 direction if alpha 0 collapses there that I'll call it success 
if I get, a, I mean, by this I mean that I'll have an output device or a measurement device. I will, I will get this zero out there. And if this is actually alpha zero, then, and similarly pi one would give you alpha one. That means that if you're measuring, I mean, if alpha zero collapses to the zero pi zero direction and alpha one collapses in the pi one direction, then I'll call it a correct identification. That means that if I do a measurement and I get a collapsed vector in the zero direction, I will call it alpha zero. And if it is actually alpha zero, then I'll call it a success. Okay, but it can be the other way around because you can see that in general, alpha one also have some projection in the pi zero direction. So whenever I measure in the pi zero direction, but alpha one collapses to pi zero, that, that's not success. That's not a correct identification. All right, that is how I'm defining my success. So my success probability, PS, uh, S stands for success. So my success probability can be given like this. Probability of getting alpha zero, okay? And uh, times probability of getting in the output zero, okay. probability of getting the output zero provided that you get alpha zero. Okay, that means that this output zero means uh, you will get it in the pi zero direction when you measure. Okay, so this is success because I am given alpha zero and the output is in the zero direction. Okay, similarly, uh, probability of alpha one and I think you can guess it, the output one. That is in the alpha one direction. Okay, so that means that you were given alpha one and you pro, uh, did the measurement and your uh, identification was one. So you got pi, you, your vector collapsed in the pi one direction. All right, so uh, this is the idea. So I think you understand that if it, if it happens the other way around that you're given alpha zero, but you have collapsed to pi one, then that's not success. You're not identifying it correctly. That's that's like a failure probability, right? So uh, you can calculate it now. Probability of getting alpha zero was half because it was, I mean, randomly chosen and it was how it was defined. So it is half. And probability of getting output pi zero when given alpha zero, as you know from before, that is pi zero alpha zero mod square all right similarly the second term is half and you have a pi one alpha one mod square all right so now uh, i will do some mathematical manipulation so uh, this can be written as half alpha zero pi zero pi zero alpha zero plus half alpha one pi one pi one alpha one all right and as you know that pi zero square is just pi zero so i can write it as alpha zero pi zero alpha zero plus half alpha one pi one alpha one all right uh, i think it's it's clear to you that what I use is it's just the square of a projection operator is the operator itself and now what I'll do is that I will write it in terms of another identity which I'll use now so it's pi zero alpha zero plus half one and you can write it as one which means the identity operator uh, minus pi zero right alpha one 
and there is a bracket here okay because we knew that pi 1 plus pi 0 was equal to the identity operator so pi 1 can be written as 1 minus pi 0 okay now uh, let's write let's write this term first then this is nothing but uh, half of alpha 1 alpha 1 right because identity is nothing I mean it it, it doesn't change the state and uh, if you remember correctly that this state can be written as plus half trace of uh, pi 0 alpha 0 alpha 0 right because I'm using the property that uh, just a second so I as I'm using the property that a inner product B is nothing but trace of B A. all right as I used in the last video so I'm using that similarly I can write the last term as minus half and it will be trace of pi 0 alpha 1 alpha 1 all right so uh, the first term uh, alpha I can obviously assume that alpha 0 and alpha 1 are normalized states so uh, I'll, the inner product between alpha 1 and alpha 1 is just 1 so this is just half and I can as trace is a linear operator I can obviously take it as a common factor and write everything else so I'm writing it down half trace of pi 0 and you have alpha 0 alpha 0 minus alpha 1 alpha 1 okay so this is the success probability that we were talking about let's mark it down in a different color maybe in a red box so uh, what do I want to do with the success probability what I want to do is that I want to maximize this because I wanted to distinguish alpha 0 and alpha 1 and I say that I cannot distinguish it unless they are orthogonal by a single measurement with certainty right but now we are doing some measurement which is embedded in this operator pi 0 all right this is our choice but from that choice how can we make it successful I mean how can we make it uh, more probable to identify it correctly by maximizing this success probability PS so that if I if I collapse in the pi 0 direction this is alpha 0 then I get alpha 0 and if I collapse in the pi 1 direction then I want it to be alpha 1 and if this identification becomes correct I call it the success probability and by cal by doing some calculation we showed that this is the form of my success probability all right so uh, the first term is just half which is just a constant so classically if I asked you that what is the probability of you getting it right if I give you a state randomly uh, alpha 0 or alpha 1 and you randomly choose it from your mind then your guess I mean your success probability will be half right you're randomly choosing alpha 0 or alpha 1 then your probability of getting it right is half but with quantum measurements I have this second term which is this all right and I can increase it more than half by quantum measurements so that is the uh, crunch of this uh, idea that uh, you can make it greater than half and how far can we go uh, we will check that in the next video all right so thank you so much